Well, Sleeping Beauty was the beginning. But then there's been so many things. That, the, that was the first big one. The last big one I worked on was um, art directing Toontown for Roger Rabbit. In between there, there was a lot of other things. I also left the studio for a while and went to Hanna-Barbera and worked from Johnny Quest to Scooby-Doo, came back to Disney, and then I moved on to television for a while. Um, shortly after doing concept artwork on The Little Mermaid, um, just a little while after that, I was at Disney TV working with, um, working on The Little Mermaid TV series. And, uh, and that was a whole lot of fun. I, I got to meet David Mumford, and which was from the gang at Disney Imagineering. And because of that, I found myself just a few days after meeting him and after seeing some of my work, especially the TV Little Mermaid series stuff, I was working on the Tokyo Seas. And I never thought I'd be working for Disney Imagineering. I never thought I'd be doing anything in Tokyo. Disney fans from all over the world unite to join one of Disney's biggest ventures, pin trading. It's fast become one of the world's greatest hobbies that offers fun and a guaranteed smile. The idea behind pin trading is to collect your favorite pins by way of buying or trading. It's a great way to meet fellow Disney fans and collectors and has fast become a fun and exciting epidemic. The rules are simple. You see a Disney cast member with a lanyard filled with pins and kindly pick one pin that you want and trade it for another that you have. Tink Bell is about 11 years old and she is out for adventure of an 11 year old. The world is her oyster. As I say, she had never seen a mirror before. She had never seen a jug before. She had never seen any of these things. And it was, oh my gosh, what's that over there? And she has the childlikeness of an 11 year old that we adore because we remember when things were new to us. You know, I do Granny in the Warner Brothers cartoons for Tweety and Sylvester. Well, I read the old woman shows her medals by James M. Barry, a play. And so I memorized her lines. And I did, even when I was six and seven years old, I was doing Granny, which I'm still doing, by the way, for Warner Brothers. I had been working for uh, Chuck and Tex Avery and uh, Walter Lance, and I got a call from a secretary and she said, is this June for it? I said, yes. She said, well, I have a man on the phone who has an idea for a television series and he'd like to hire you. And his name is Jay Ward. They had an idea about a moose and a squirrel. So my voiceover agent called and said, uh, the original voice of Jiminy Cricket for the movie Pinocchio, his name was Cliff Edwards, passed away. And they said, Disney has uh, some stuff that needs to be done, and they want to find an actor who can literally recreate Cliff Edwards' voice, but it has to sound exactly like his Jiminy Cricket voice so the character remains constant, so there's no change in his attitude and behavior. So he said, you think you can do it? I said, well, of course, and I hung up the phone, and I said, what does Jiminy Cricket sound like? Because it had been, I hadn't seen the movie since I was a kid. Always keep wishing on a star and your dreams will come true. <laughs>